Hey, if you're like me, you have to deal with JSON files like all the time. And you might sometimes reach for JQ, but the tool is a bit confusing. I'm going to show you how JQ works. If you need to do things with JSON documents, JQ is awesome. You just have to learn some of the rules and I can teach you pretty quick. So the first thing to know, right, is if you have a, a JSON document like this, JQ lets you treat it like it's a JavaScript object, right? And what I mean by that is, right, when I when I pipe it into JQ, I can do dot one key and it's like I'm going in to the first key of this object, right? Same if I do this, I can go key one dot key two and now I get value one. It's like just like I'm at the JavaScript console or something, right? I can do the same thing with arrays, right? So here I have just a list and then I can pass it this index and get elements two to four, right? Same here. Here I'm just cutting off the first two elements. I'm starting with three, four, five. And you know, I use negative numbers to go the other way, right? So basically it's just letting us treat a JSON document like it's an object. Right, so here I have this object, it is a list and inside of it are some objects and they all have name and I can combine these things together, right? So here I'm going dot into the document, getting the first element, getting its name, which is JQ from up here, right? Same, if I give it the whole list, then I'm getting all of the values, right? So the way I would describe that is JQ has array and object indexing. It lets you go into the document based on the keys and the array offsets. It also has what we call constructors, right? So here I have just a document. It's an array and it has some objects, all of which, which have key A, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into that object, go into that array, and then I'm going to get key A. But once I get it back, I'm going to wrap it in an array, right? So this is what we call an array constructor. If I take those away like that, then I'm not getting an array. Those on the outside just let me wrap it into a list. Now I can do the same thing with a JavaScript object, right? So here I have a list, Adam Gordon Bell. I'm going to use a zero to get my Adam. I'm going to use two to get my Bell. But I'm going to wrap these into an object that I just create myself, right? So this is just how I write a JavaScript object in JSON, right? I write first name. But here for the value, I put my JQ query. And here for the value, I put my JQ query, which means I can run it like that. And I built a new object, right? So those are array and object constructors in JQ. They just let you take your JQ statements and wrap them up into, into JSON objects, right? Um, either into lists or objects, I guess, to be more specific. And there's also a shorthand that you can use for that. So I have this object here, name, use, other one, other two. If I want to make a new object that just contains the name, here's how I would do it, right? I just do dot name to select that name, but then I wrap it in a new object, give it key name. So that you can see down here works awesome. However, I can also do it this way, right? So what I've done here is I don't have to say name colon dot name. I don't have to say use colon dot use. If I'm not changing this value, I can just specify it. If I'm not changing this value, I can just specify it. If I need to change it, if I need to give it a new name, then I need to do it this way, right? Like up here, right? So now I need to specify because I'm changing it. So it's just a shorthand for how to select uh, things. JQ also has functions. There's a bunch of functions that you might need, right? Sorting my elements, right? So here I've sorted these into lists. I can reverse things, right? Here I'm just reversing this order. Uh, I can use length which I use quite a bit. So length runs on an array and just gives us back the length of it. And then you can combine these various things, right? So here I have an object with title, JQ select. I'm going to get the title and then I'm going to use a Unix pipe and use that to get the length. So let's do that, right? Makes sense. Length is nine. But there's a shorthand in JQ, which is super handy, which is the same pipe. It's just, this is a JQ pipe. We're still within our JQ statement, but now we're taking the results of this and piping into this, just how it works in your, in your shell. The reason that's cool, you're going to see, because we can bring all these elements together, right? The selecting into things, the constructing things, the piping things together, and the functions. Here is a, a sample GitHub issue from the GitHub API. 
a little bit simplified, right? We have a title, number, labels. The labels are a list. The list is objects. So I want to simplify this because I just want to know the number of labels that are on issues, right? So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to get the title, I'm going to get the number, but instead of getting the label count, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do dot labels, right? Which will return me this array. And then I'm going to get the length of the array, which in this case will be two, right? And then I'm going to relabel that as label count. So this is just putting together uh, these things we've done so far, right? Just a simple way to transform things, count up some elements. We're using pipes, we're using functions, etc. So that is kind of the third big thing about JQ in my mind, right? You can combine things together with pipes. And then what can you combine together? Well, the selectors and the filters and whatever, but also there's built-in functions. These are kind of the three levels of JQ knowledge you need to, to get a lot done, right? So the first one is you can select into things using keys, using offsets into arrays. You can wrap things back up into JSON objects, right? Using arrays, using object constructors. And then you can combine these all together with pipes and functions, right? So here I have, I'm going into these items, then I'm piping into the items. Actually, let me just show you how this works. Um, I have this JSON document, which is an object with items, which are just a bunch of numbers, right? I'm going to map into those items and then into that array, and I'm going to pipe that to to string, right? So I'm going to turn one, two, three into the string, one, two, three, uh, et cetera, and then get the length on them, which will give me the digit count, right? So I relabel that as digit count, which is just a quick way to get kind of the order of magnitude of my items, right? Like how many digits do they have? And I get the result, right? Um, so this is just an example of pulling all of these elements together. We have pipes, we have functions, we're mapping things, uh, we're wrapping things. That's basically what you need to know in most cases with JQ, but you can, you know, you might be wondering where did these functions like length come from? Well, you can actually write your own. Here is uh, my own length function that ChatGPT helped me write and my own sort function. You would have to pass these to uh, JQ before you call them. And uh, people take this really far, right? Like this is a prime number sieve that somebody built in JQ. And it's using map and select and reduce, which we didn't get to, but but you can actually do a lot with those. If you want to know about map, select, reduce, and some more advanced JQ things, check out my longer video that I'll, I'll link to, uh, where I go into a bit more detail and use the uh, JQ GitHub issues as an example. Yeah, so that's JQ. Those are the big things uh, that you need to know. And if you found anything confusing, if I went too fast, let me know in the comments or give me a like. And please uh, check out Earthly. This is the Earthly YouTube channel. Earthly is an open source build tool, makes your build faster. It's pretty awesome. All right, take care.